Okay, just waiting to see if some more people show up. Check if we're recording here. I better turn off my video. Okay, well, I think we're set up. Uh, so only one person here right now. Let me know if, if you, well, if you can hear me, I guess. All right, let's see, we're gonna chat up. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. We can certainly start talking about stuff while we wait. I don't, don't know if I'll make any announcements or anything until we get at least a few students here. Hmm, what else here? Oh, one more. I've oh, got two now. <laughs> Let's 
So I'm just kind of waiting around, see if some more people will show up. But uh, if anybody wants to ask a question, uh, has some things to discuss, just go ahead and throw it out there. Okay, uh, any questions, you guys? Did you guys find the, uh, did you guys get the feedback from the first assignment okay? I was gonna mention to those that show up that um, Visual Studio Code has, uh, I mean, this, this markdown is uh, kind of becoming a standard for documentation and stuff. So if you pull up a markdown document in Visual Studio Code, you can um, actually bring up a preview of it, which is kind of nice. Um, it's a little bit more readable, this, uh, this markdown format. So all that stuff I send back to you guys is, it's really just, you know, just, um, just extracting the file that you supposedly made with the make submit, make certain that I get exactly the files I need, and then, and then we compile it using uh, make or make all. So it should be exactly the same compilation that you're using in your dev box. And then we just run the unit test on it and capture the output, and that's, that's all that's in here. So I'm mostly looking for, uh, I mostly just uh, look and see that it compiled and that uh, whether all your tests successfully ran or not when I grade these assignments and then I just add in some comments and stuff, so. <clears throat> Oops, <laughs> didn't mean to, I didn't mean to pick on, uh, um, this might be Ian right here, I meant to hide that, sorry. Maybe I should close that. So, although most people had kind of similar assignments, had similar comments on this first assignment. So most people got, did get it to compile and run. I say 90% of the people that made an attempt had it compiling and running and pretty much they got a hundred on it. So <clears throat> on this first assignment. We ought to be able to do that same thing with our assignments as well, but I've already got a PDF in there, so don't know if that would be of any use to anybody, but but yeah, that, that markdown will render too. And Okay, yeah, only two students, so uh, any questions that you guys wanna ask about? Not really, uh, I was going to ask how to uh, open the MD, but I saw you open that in Visual Studio. Yeah, so just open right up, but, but yeah, there's a nice preview. I think it's Control-Shift, uh, 
control KV or just uh, yeah hit the preview over there if you want to get the rendered version of the markdown so I mean the markdown is just a plain text file so so yeah I mean even if you don't have a, an editor that can render a markdown preview for you you, can, you should be able to just open it up in any old text editor and, and see it so markdown is you know like a, it's a markup language like HTML or other stuff with tags for things like uh, so yeah the dash will give you a bullet point list and pound sign will give you level one headings and the triple quotes will make uh, code blocks for you and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I mean, I'd mostly planned on kind of reviewing the first program assignment, the first quiz, maybe. Uh, see if anybody had questions about that. Of course, if there's any kind, if there's any questions about our week two um, stuff. Um, Yeah, post a lot of yeah go ahead uh, on the quiz for the filling the blanks is that an automatic computer checking it or is it manually yeah the, the i manually have to grade so most of the stuff where you have to enter code or something is going to be manually graded so you won't get the immediate thing so you'll have to wait till i uh, i should have it graded by um you know the next day anyway but uh yeah so if anybody was wondering, uh, I think I set these previews so that you can't see them till the next morning anyway. So, so I've noticed a lot of students don't really know how or um, didn't realize that there's a way to go back and, and review the, um, the answers for quizzes in MyLeo online. So I had a post about that, but you should be able to pull down, if you, if you bring up your quiz or test, pull down that little, arrow there and then there'll be an option for um, going to some uh, like a submission view or submission review or something like that um, and uh, for, for the quizzes for this class you should find all the answers for them uh, and maybe additional feedback as well so. that of course this week we're supposed to be working on structures and classes so um, I mean we'll be using classes a lot so, so some kind of object-oriented um, design ideas for when we're building um, our data structures and things so And I, I did mean to mention that I meant to mention kind of go through all these um, announcements that I had, but um, yeah, do check. So um, some people, I, I thought that the build environment had already been set up for this, but um, um, some people on the first assignment, some students um, were doing their code with um, um, undefined variables, very common mistake. I still kind of make it myself too often that I should, but um, um, let's see, let's go to, uh, oh, but I mean, in general, yeah, you, I won't be able to show it here because I already did it, but um, whenever I get, whenever I tell you guys to, um, uh, well, you shouldn't get an error, um, but uh, for you guys, you should be able to do a git pull either on your dev box or on your host machine. And, and if I if I push an update, it'll pull it down. So I occasionally, you know, make corrections or have updates or stuff. So, so everybody ought to learn that git pull so you can pull down any updates I have. So if you did that uh, now, um, It's going to some additional warning. So the, the particular thing I was talking about is this is a very common error if, if you try and use a variable. So like, um, so for both of these functions you were supposed to write for the first assignment, you had to have a loop where you were some uh, making a running sum of something. So for the calculate mean, it should have been pretty simple, just a running sum of all the values in the array. A little bit more complex for the calculate standard deviation, but in either case. Um, if you don't initialize this variable, so when you do a plus equals, it's the same as saying sum equals sum plus that. 
the problem is that uh, if, if you don't initialize some, the very first time through this loop, there's potentially garbage, a, a garbage value in sum, right? So it's not guaranteed in C to initialize just anything. So if it has a garbage, uh, it's going to add garbage to x0 the first time through the loop, and you'll get you know, x0 plus some random amount there, and, and uh, you'll get the wrong answer. So some people had a bug, which is a little bit tough to detect. But, but yeah, we always want to have our tools kind of help us, you know, if it can, to actually tell us when we have potential bugs like that. So I, I corrected the build environment. So if you do a git pull, now if you do a compile, it should refuse to compile um, files that have, um, uh, that where you're not correctly initializing variables before you try and use them. So, so you'll get a compilation error instead with a, you know, with a message that's pretty direct saying you've used the variable before you, um, before you initialized it. So. So yeah, that fix on the bill, is, it was actually, in case you're curious, it was just adding a flag, this optimization flag, so this dash O2. So that's another thing. You should see that now when you're doing a build, along with the other flags that we, that we use. Um, and yeah, we're still compiling here, but uh, once it tries and compile the uh, assignment one functions SCPP, we should end up with a compiler error here, hopefully. There we go. So some may be used uninitialized uh, in this function. Of course, it'll take you to the first place where it's used, but but usually that should be a pretty good indication of kind of what you did, what you need to do there. So anyway, that was what that was about, the uninitialized variable. I had at least two or three people had uninitialized variable bugs. Um, and since I didn't have that flag on, so if you don't have that flag on, it'll compile, um, but you will probably not be passing your tests. And, and the reason why you don't pass your tests is a little bit hard to figure out. But it's basically because you're getting some garbage in there when you create, when you do your sums, sometimes, not always. So. So that was what that announcement was about. But yeah, my big plan had probably been to talk about assignment one, maybe talk about the test. So let's see here, some other, I had some other general kind of things for you two that are here. Um, Oh yeah, so I had a couple of people do this. Uh, this is mo mostly interesting because this is directly applicable to this class. I mean, one of our main goals is to learn about algorithms and about analysis of algorithms, which is basically being able to um, uh, analyze the, the performance of an algorithm so you can compare different versions, right? So if you correctly reuse uh, calculate mean when you calculate the standard deviation uh, that means you would have had to have called calculate mean but uh, you can certainly get the correct result by calling calculate mean like directly here so instead of putting in a temporary variable like I had here Um, and this should work fine in terms of, of it'll pass the tests because, you know, you call calculate mean, returns the mean of, of the, the array X, right? So it should build uh, oh, unused variable. <laughs> so now it'll complain about unused variables and stop you from compiling for that as well. I think I should have been doing that before, even, even before I added in that new compilation. So anyway. And, uh, and yeah, we run fine like that. But the problem is, um, uh, is efficiency one, right? So every time you call calculate mean, it's running through its own loop 
n times, where n is the size of the array. So this is what's known as an n squared algorithm that we'll talk later on about in, when we talk about the analysis of algorithms in this, place, in, in this class, because this loop here in calculate standard deviation executes n times, but, so in, 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 but for each time it executes, uh, it's calling calculate mean, which also executes n times. So you get n times n basically executions of the statements, um, uh, these statements here. So the summation happens in squared times, right? And I mean, in square, you know, it might not seem to be in some when n is, is 10 values or 100 values or 1,000 values or even a million values, it'll be hardly noticeable. But, you know, it's, it's not uncommon uh, these days in, in this era of big data to be working with billions and trillions of, of values. If you need to calculate the standard deviation on trillions of values, you'll see a noticeable difference between an n squared versus if, if you do the calculate mean outside of this, it only so you, you do the loop n times once here, and then this loop executes uh, n times afterwards. So it's really just 2n instead of n squared. And that'll be much less, um, much less computations than an n squared algorithm, right? So it'll be significantly faster doing this two n times instead of n squared times. So, and you can do that because the calculate mean never changes, right? So, so you, you really, it's a waste of effort to, to calculate it multiple times inside the loop. You, you can just calculate it once, be done with it, and then that's your value of the mean that you need to subtract from each value to get the, the, the squared differences that you have to sum up. Oops, that should be a double. There we go. I'll always build and test, make certain everything still runs and all the tests pass. So, um, yeah, I mean, of course, it depends. I mean, you you can't always avoid uh, avoid you know creating an n squared algorithm. So when we talk about sorting, some sorting algorithms are n squared, and you can't avoid that if you do them if, if you do the sort a particular way. Uh, but yeah, of course you want to avoid work when you can. So yeah, I mean in this case, since calculate mean doesn't really change, um, um, it, it's it's a waste of effort to call it multiple times. You can call it just once uh, and keep that value in a in a, in a local variable. Um, and then just reuse the local variable that reuse that calculation um, over and over instead of redoing the calculation multiple times. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of the point that we're trying to make here. But yeah, and so I mean, you know, some, somebody asked the question again. We're kind of skipping ahead here to analysis of algorithms. But yeah, anytime you have a loop inside of a loop. That's an n squared algorithm. So kind of the same way here. If I had implemented, if 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 you'd done the assignment wrong and not reused the um, reused the um, calculate mean function, but if you'd implemented it by hand here, um, I can't use IDX again. So um, Um, so to get the sum, um, x bar, um, or the, the, the mean is just uh, the sum slash n. So another common problem, you know, is, is that, um, um, well, this really shouldn't be a problem here, so I probably led a few people astray because if, if you divide a float by an integer, the result will be an integer, but, but you do have to be careful if you divide an integer by an integer. So if my sum was an integer, but you want to get a floating point result, you do have to do some casting. I, I always just try to make it explicit. So if I, if I want a floating point result, or, or in this case, I really want a double result, I, I make certain that both the, the top and the bottom of the values that I'm dividing are both doubles. Um, so this will guarantee that I always get a double result. So I don't get integer division happening. So anyway, so, so back to this. Um, so this is actually an n squared algorithm. All 
right? That if you're not reusing the calculate mean, although again, you know, you don't don't have to have this loop inside of this other loop. I could I could move this before, calculate the mean x bar once, and then go to my next loop. So even even without reusing the calculate mean function, um, I, I could just move this out of there, right? And uh, and turn it into a, a linear algorithm instead of an n squared algorithm. So. But um, yeah, so I'm probably getting a bit far afield here, you know, skipping a lot ahead in this course. But at some point, when we get to analysis of algorithms, you got to convince yourself that that like this loop here, if 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 n is ten, the number of times that this statement right here. So this statement right here, the number of times that this is executing is 100. It's going to be 10 times 10, right, or n squared times. And that's kind of what we mean by n squared is the number of times that this these statements inside of the inner loop are executing uh, here. So, uh, anyway, let's get rid of that. So that was what that comment was about. Um, yeah, another one, you know, I actually wish more people, I hope, hope everybody is reading these announcements and understanding these. Um, so this is gonna become more important in this class. Um, so let me get my header file up here as well. So, you know, I don't think almost nobody did this, if anybody, but um, I wanted to point people's attention to this. So um, in the example solution, we define the second parameter to be what's known as a constant parameter in both of these functions. And there's a reason for this. And really, you should define this parameter as constant here because If you watch the, um, you know, if you work through the materials for week one, you know, you, you should know that the arrays are passed in by um, reference by default. So when you pass in an array, uh, it's really a, a reference to, to the values and it doesn't, doesn't make a whole copy of all the values in the uh, array. It, it, it passes it by reference for efficiency reasons, right? So if, if I had an array of a billion items, um, and if it was copying thing, it was calling it by value and copying the billion items before it could call the function. That would that would have a big performance hit. So so basically, any kind of user defined type like classes and structures, but also arrays uh, are actually going to be passed in by reference by default, right? So instead of making a whole copy of everything, um, um, it's just it's really you know we'll talk later about pointers and, and memory references in this class, but it's really just a pointer to the same location in memory of these values. So the effect of this, if you watch my videos or lectures, is that if I make changes, so if I do something like modify item zero of the array, when I return from calling this function, um, I'm, you know, the, 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 whoever called this function is gonna now find that the array that they called it with, whatever, whatever the array was that they called this function on, has been modified, that, that the zeroth element um, now has the value of five in it, right? So, I mean, you know, that's a perfectly valid thing to do. Sometimes you want that kind of side effect, so you, so you wanna modify the array to do something, right? But a lot of times you're just passing in this array um, as a parameter for a calculation. And that's what we're doing for both of these functions here, right? We're not modifying the array and we don't want to modify the array. We just want to, you know, calculate the mean in the first case and then return what the mean is of those values in the array and calculate the standard deviation in the second case and, and return what the standard deviation is uh, in that case, right? But, but, but um, since we're not modifying the contents of that array, uh, we should let the compiler know and let people know who are using our function that, that 
that it's a constant parameter, okay? So since these are, are passed in by reference, by default, by specifying this as constant, um, uh, even though, you know, we, we still have to pass it in by reference, you know, we don't want to make a copy for efficiency reasons, but we guarantee that we're not going to modify any of the values in the array, right? So, so it's safe if I want to use this function to call it, and I know that any values I had in there will still be the same values after I return from calling this function. So, and in fact, you'll get a compiler error. So if I'd actually tried to compile my code, oops, the compiler will enforce the constantness of this. So if we build, and in fact, it can even recognize in the IntelliSense that, um, um, that um, I don't see the error message there, but but that um, that that probably means that it's it's um, detecting that there's going to be illegal for me to um, uh, assign into this constant parameter here, right? But definitely we should get an error when we build that, right? So, so here, the, the, again, this is one of the biggest things from using any programming language, but, but C can be especially kind of crafty on its error messages. Um, so, you know, so a beginner um, uh, who hasn't used a lot, this, this error message isn't really great. You know, what's an L value? Um, and this, well, why does it have to be modifiable? Uh, this may be a little bit better, so assignment of, of, only, of a read-only location, but it uses pointer x instead of like x with the square brackets, right? That's the array of x. But anyway, you know, it, it, it is basically because of this. Um, so um, I'm not certain why you would get an error. It says, so, uh, you know, this should be perfectly legal. Um, I mean, of course, you need to make certain that, um, you know, so if I want it to be an... Um, um, a non-constant parameter, I have to change it here, I have to change it in my header. Um, and if I do that, it should build. Um, so um, here, So, so here, you know, again, because I guaranteed X to be, so I mean, the, the compiler can detect really subtle problems here. So since I declared this X to be constant, I can't, I can't try and pass that array to something else that doesn't guarantee the same thing, the non-constantness. So that's going to force me uh, to, to do this demonstration to actually make everything non to make both of these non-constant. Right? So that was why I was getting that problem there. Uh, now we should build. Um, I'm probably going to have to make clean because I had here I had re I, I think I had compiled the tests uh, with it before. So let, let me try to make it clean. So here's what why I often you know go back and use clean if I have um, mysterious error messages here. So um, un, undefined reference because it still thinks that this is a constant. So so let's clean it so we force it to rebuild uh, everything here, and that should hopefully. that up although of course we're gonna have to wait for it to build the test now so but I think the reason why I'm getting that though is I actually do have a problem with the build system so because I changed the header file it should have forced the assignment one test to recompile but I, I, I should probably check our make build system because it didn't rebuild the test even though um, I had changed the header file and that, and that was kind of the reason why because it really needed to be rebuilt since I changed that the function prototype from being constant to being non-constant uh, here, so. But yeah, as usual, that'll take its time, it should compile. There we go. So yeah, it, 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 will, it will build it if, uh, or should, <laughs> if you rebuild everything cleanly. So I'll see if we run, so, oh. Hmm. 
Uh, failing some tests now, though. Some failing tests at line so nine here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, failing because I'm changing my array, I think. Oh, yeah, so I'm changing it to five, and then, yeah, after that, I'm going to have fives in my tests here, and, and yeah, if I reuse the X, so, anyway, I don't want to do that, because my change to five is going to come back um, here when I try to use it again, so the answer isn't negative four anymore if I... Um, of the average of the first two values in the array. There we go. That's better. All right. Let's see, what else? Um, Yeah, for those of you who watched this kind of help session, um, do remember to change your information at the top here. So, um, in fact, I noticed that um, that uh, I probably need to go through and change this since, since most people I'm asking you guys to use Visual Studio Code. But, but yeah, try to make certain that all the stuff for the file header, uh, so when I say the file header, I mean the stuff at the top of the file is all correct. Uh, and, and that should be changed for any file where you add code. So usually for the test, you're not adding code, you might be uncommenting something. But you, but you don't have to change the assignment on the test. But for other assignments, you should change the file headers. Like in this assignment, you should have changed your name and your ID. Um, make certain it's got the right information for which development environment you're using. So hopefully everybody's using Visual Studio Code. You know, and check these other things. So just a little thing, but um, Uh, and, and also, so, you know, these are file headers. So that's, that's this block comment at the top of, of the file. And these are function headers. So as a couple of people have asked, so later on, I might not give these to you. So, so you'll you need to kind of understand this format. It needs to be in the same format. And I'll kind of maybe later on show why, right? But, but the general format is, you know, we have the slash two stars. This is a, a, a doc oxygen thing. So the, the thing that generates the documentation from our code automatically looks for these two stars in order to identify function um, comments here, function headers. Uh, but yeah, yeah, anyway, so you've got that. You've got a short description, um, which can be just the name of the function or maybe two or three word description. And then you should have a one line or more, one sentence to three sentence or five sentence, long description, all with a single star in front, all lined up here. And then you should document all parameters. So you need at param tags, the name of the parameter, and then a one or three sentence description of the parameter. And, and every individual parameter has to have an at param tag. And if the function is a value returning function, you need to have an at returns tag. So if it's a void function, you don't need the at returns. But if it's a non-void function, like, like both of these are returning doubles, you should have an at returns and describe the return values. Anyway, that, that's what we mean by the function header, uh, sorry, the, the file header at the top um, and these function headers. Every, and every function needs to have this function header documentation. It needs to be immediately before the start of the body of the function. So you shouldn't have anything in between, not even blank space um, in between this function header um, and your function. So those are just style kinds of issues. So. I had a couple of other kind of 
style comments. Um, you know, try and I mean, I, I try and show good style in the example solutions. So that's another reason why I hope people look at these example solutions that I po post and compare them with your own. Um, I mean, my style maybe isn't the greatest. So for example, if I if if I wasn't using sort of the mathematical n and x in our assignment description, I probably would have named these parameters something a little bit more meaningful than n and x. So n and x is a little bit generic. So, you know, we're naming something like maybe num, num values or number of values and, and um, values or, you know, or something like that, list maybe. Um, but, but, you know, the, the function names are not bad. So, you know, I tried to be mean, I tried to use meaningful names that, that, that makes them readable kind of in, in an English sentence sort of way, you know, a little bit in your code. So, so yeah, I mean, if you look at the unit tests, you know, I mean, these read somewhat English-like. Check that the mean, check that when we calculate the mean of this array with one value, it's approximately equal to three, that kind of thing. And calculate standard deviation. So anyway, so, so try and think of good meaningful names. Don't don't use generic variable names. I J. Definitely don't do things like have uh, V one, V two, X one, things like that. Right. That that forces the reader of your code to have to go back and you know the the, the name gives you no clue about what is what it's being used for. Right. So so you have to go back and kind of simulate the code in your head or step through it with a debugger to, to, to figure out kind of what the, um, the variables, you know. So anybody who's ever had to go back and maintain old code or refactor old code, I mean, that's the first thing you normally do is, is you go back and try and, and give all the, the functions good, better names to make them more readable and all the, the variables kind of better names. So. Uh, yeah, that, that was all the comments I had for the first assignment, I think. Uh, yeah, we already talked about getting your build update and uninitialized variables. Um, I thought I might take a look at the quiz, maybe. Um, just real quickly. So, you know, again, the, the purpose of the quiz, they, they're not worth a whole lot of points, you know, in the scheme of things for this class, right? So I'm, I'm trying to get it. So, you know, if, if you're, uh, if, if you're, I don't know, if, if you're working with a group of people, for example, on these quizzes, which I can tell some people are doing, uh, and kind of a warning. So, you know, I, I might not do anything on the quizzes, but I might just give uh, uh, zero grades for people that are just giving me the same, you know, that's obvious where you're kind of working together as a group. Uh, on the tests where, you know, it's, it's worth a lot more points. But, you know, especially for the quizzes, they're, they're meant to be a low pressure way for you to check whether you're really using the lecture videos and the textbook, you know. Um, so, you know, if, if you're missing a lot of stuff in here, that's, that's a clue that, you know, maybe you need to go back and read some more, you know, and, or, or look at the example program some more, that kind of thing, right? So maybe I'll skip over the multiple choice, true, false, um, look at the, the sort of answer questions real quickly. So, um, you know, so, and, and I, I might be a little bit more strict on the quizzes than I might be otherwise, even though, so I might be a little bit more lenient anyway for, for questions on the tests. So for example, you know, it, it was incorrect if you, um, if you forgot, so if you went like four A C, so if so if you did, um, um, so so even if you correctly used the functions here, but had minus four A C, right? So that's not going to work. So so that's mathematical notation minus four A C. So to to translate that into um, C, you have to have all of your operators like the multiplication and and so on, right? Another thing, although I don't know if I don't I don't think I caught anybody doing it. 
on this quiz, but um, um, if you forget the parentheses around here, that, that's actually a different expression. So you do have to be careful about, you know, so, so here dividing this top by the bottom um, is not the same as dividing uh, this first by two and then dividing that by A. So the parentheses are, so, so there's an implied parentheses in the mathematical expression here around 2A. So you really do have to have parentheses here or you'll get a different result. Um, so, so yeah, if you instead if you do that, it's going to, uh, because division, so this has to do, you should have read about this, and I think I talked about it in my video somewhere, right? So, so you know, C follows the normal order of precedence, but uh, division and multiplication have the same um, order of precedence, so, so if you have multiple operations, divisions, and multiplications in a row, it'll first do the first one and then, then do the second one. So it'll first divide whatever uh, here by two, and then it'll multiply by A, which, which will give you a different result than if you first multiply A times two and then use that to divide the, the numerator, the, the top part there. So, so anyway, that, th those are kind of- What if uh, we write the correct answer, but it's a different format? If you write the correct answer, but it's a different format. Um, like I mean, yeah, I mean, spacing and things shouldn't have been a problem. So again, you know, you should go back and review the quizzes and see if I made a mistake on you, right? And you can certainly ask if, if uh, why I didn't mark off. I, I won't always give comments on things like this, but um, but yeah, you might just get like half a point or or no points depending. So yeah, I mean, spacing is fine, um, um, but but yeah, I probably have to look specifically at. Um, um, what you had to, to see if I marked it incorrectly or if, or if, or, if, or, or what, what the issue was. Um, yeah. um, I have, I added curly braces to a for function and the answer that's supposed to be correct uh, doesn't have the curly braces, but other than that is um, basically the same. Uh, same in email. So yeah, that shouldn't matter, right? So curly braces um, like here, you know, um, curly braces are optional, although our class style guideline requires that these always appear, but that should be being enforced by the, uh, the, the style checker. Whenever you run, make, submit, or whenever you save your file, it should, but, but anyway, yeah, so, but in terms of the quiz, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily, I shouldn't take points off, you know, for, for that, you know, as long as the code compiles and runs, right? Um, yeah, so for the second quiz question, so enumerated types are, are things that uh, I know a lot of students uh, haven't used before, right? Uh, but they're very useful, right? So, so I did talk a little bit about the, these in my lecture video. So this is perfectly legal um, um, code, uh, C++ code. Um, and um, if, if you type it in and run it, you'll see that this, this loop will run three times. So the enumeration is fall, winter, spring, summer. So since we, we start at fall um, and we go up to less than summer, it's just gonna do the first three, fall, winter, spring. And since we're just outputting dollar sign, you'll get three dollar signs basically so, uh, for the second one. And, and, and it's perfect, so, so this defines uh, an ordering as we talked about in the video for enumerated types. So, so you can ask questions like, you know, is winter less than summer? Um, which it is by this ordering here. So that should be true or one um, on your output. So. Um, yeah, so, you know, most, most more people got this right. Uh, so I had more mistakes on the previous two than on this one, I think, usually. So, so yeah, I accepted, you know, using um, a loop to uh, initialize this array to zero, um, or you could have used like an initializer, which which would discuss in the textbook. I, I probably discussed it in my lecture videos as well, like this, or or you didn't. So this is even kind of a long way of doing it. So another. Um, so these, these initializers are only useful usually for kind of like small example programs. But, uh, but yeah, if you do an initializer, you should initialize all 20 of the values in the array called beta to zero. So, so both of those do the same thing. So. 
and I probably took off for this, but uh, just to emphasize that um, you know C is is a zero ba zero index based programming language. So if I ask for the um, the tenth value. If I ask for the 11th value, that's going to be at index 10 because the first value is at in index zero, the second value is at index one, and so on, right? So, so I know it's a little bit kind of, I don't know, a little tricky there, but um, you know, I think most people kind of got it. But Do we need the end line? Uh, well, I mean, I, if, if, if you didn't have syntactically correct, um, I'd probably, if I had noticed it, Maybe took some points off, but yeah. So you should have, should have, should have had like a semicolon um, to, to end the statement. For example, oh, for, for, for blank uh, three, that one, uh, the e e n d l. Um, well, yeah, I probably didn't take off if you didn't have that, or, or I shouldn't have. So yeah. So each one of those should have been worth, you know, two thirds of a point since I gave two points for the three questions. So, so yeah, if I took off, a, if you had one point three three, it means I took off for one of the three here. So. How, how do we know that when we need to add it? Uh, well, I mean, you can ask me. I, I mean, the, I, I, I guess the general rule is that um, um, if I ask you to give output that looks exactly like something, I might take off if, if your output doesn't look exactly like what, I, what I'm asking for, right? But here, um, since I just said output the 11th component, this will output the 11th component. So if you don't have the inline, you know, you just wouldn't have a new line in your output. But I didn't really give something with, that would indicate you'd need to have a new line on there. So, so I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'm trying to say that um, I'm, I might not be consistent. I'll try to be consistent for everybody uh, and, and also try to be consistent from questions here and questions in future quizzes and things. So, but um, but uh, yeah, in general, if, if it is actually valid C code, and if it if it did what I asked for, it should get the points, right? Um, if you know, so so it might be like if I'm specifically asking you to format a particular way, then then yeah, if you're missing inline where you need it to get the format that particular way, then yeah, if, if that's kind of the point of the question, I might be more particular um, or less so. so. Um, so yeah, I noticed I'm probably gonna have to wrap up here. So I'm kind of here, here was the last one. Um, so this would be directly relevant to your um, uh, our assignment here, just because you know you had to write a couple of functions where you took arrays as input to the function. So in particular, if you call this with a size of three, it's all, it's only and, and since this is less than three, it's going to only add up the sum up the, the values at index zero, one, and two. So it should be one plus three plus five, which is eight. Um, and here again, this is emphasizing that arrays are passed in by reference. So by assigning the result of my sum into index zero, when we ret return and output index zero, you're going to have the the one is going to be replaced by the sum of those first three values, right? So, so you should get nine. So, uh, and I, I'm pretty certain I double checked that. So if, I, if you actually put that into a file and compile it and run it, um, you know, you have to add a main function, but, but it, you should get nine for that. So. All right, so yeah, I'm probably gonna have to um, um, end this session here. Um, but um, yeah, so, so that was the kind of the main thing. So maybe on the next session, we'll talk more about the second, the, the next programming assignment. So I'm sure that'll be um, more, more on people's minds by that point. So, so prepare for that on Wednesday to talk about our second programming assignment. All right, with that, I better end. So I need to get to the next one here. Uh, see you guys later then.